the Wikibon Project. We're an open source uh, research firm based out of Monroe, Mass. Uh, today I'm going to talk about big data and Hadoop, some of the key drivers, um, explain a little bit about the ecosystem and some of the use, early uh, use cases we're seeing uh, among some of the big web, web companies as well as financial services. So I thought uh, a good place to start was, would be with a definition. Um, big data is a term we hear bandied about a lot in the press these days. Um, but exactly what is it? At Wikibon, uh, we define big data as data sets whose size, type, and or speed make them impractical to process and analyze with traditional database technologies and related data management tools. Um, I think it's important here to notice, uh, to note that we do not put a you know, a size limit on what we consider big data. So when you get to a certain terabyte level, level, it's big data. If you don't reach that point, it's not big data. That's not really how we look at it. Um, it's also important in this definition, uh, the word impractical. Notice it's not impossible because there is a fair amount of big data watching going on right now. Big data slapped onto uh, a lot of incumbent database vendors slapping the big data term onto their existing products. And to some degree, those products can uh, handle big data, but not in a practical way, a cost-efficient or time-effective way. So why is it important? Um, at Wikibon, we believe big data is the new definitive source of competitive advantage across all industries. And for those organizations that embrace big data, the possibilities for innovation, improved agility, and increased profitability are nearly endless. Now, of course, there's a lot of talk about uh, the organizations the enterprise is using big data at the moment, a lot of the web-based companies, but we definitely see Hadoop and other big data approaches um, reaching the mainstream over the course of the next six to 12 months or a little bit longer. So there are three um, key big data drivers that I think you need to understand uh, when it comes to you know, what's driving this, uh, this movement. Uh, the number one, you probably heard about the three Vs, uh, volume, variety, and velocity of data. Um, by volume, that's probably the most obvious one. We're talking about the size of data sets uh, involved. Um, volumes of data are increasing exponentially. Um, for variety, we talk about that's more the type of data and the different sources of data, um, also increasingly uh, growing. And finally, velocity refers to not just the speed that data is created, but also the speed at which enterprises must harness and analyze that data in order to make uh, to, to derive business value from it. Uh, number two, hardware commoditization. Uh, this is particularly important because in order to scale out, to uh, scale out your infrastructure to manage, process, and analyze such large volumes of, of various sources of data, uh, it's not, it's, you need commoditized hardware that is not proprietary, expensive. Uh, it's not a scale up approach, which is kind of more the more common approach to database management. It's a scale out approach and for that we need commodity hardware. And of course, cloud computing. Um, a lot of the data that we consider big data does not live inside your corporate data center. It is out on the web. Uh, it's in your partner's data center, your customer's data center. So the cloud is becoming a, an obvious and, and good fit, a place to process and analyze your big data. So what exactly are the characteristics of big data versus what we call small data? Well, small data, we think of gigabytes to terabytes of data. In some cases, terabytes is, is, can be considered big data depending on your organization. Uh, but generally, gigabytes to terabytes of data, it's often centralized. Uh, think of the data temple in your organization, the database that everybody uh, wants to get at and where all the, the one version of the truth lives. Uh, structured data often with sta uh, stable data models uh, with known complex interrelationships. Uh, big data, by contrast, we're talking about petabytes to exabytes of data. Uh, it's distributed, as I mentioned, throughout the web, in your customer's data center, in your partner's data center, and elsewhere. Uh, the data is often semi-structured or even unstructured. Um, think about the unstructured text data, for instance. Uh, this type of data does not fit into neat rows and columns we're more traditionally uh, used to dealing with. Uh, involves flat schemas and few complex interrelationships, and indeed, uh, discovering those interrelationships is one of the challenges of big data. So what are the sources? Um, I think we all know about social media. 
uh, becoming more prevalent. Um, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and, uh, and more. Um, every tweet, uh, Facebook updates, LinkedIn profile uh, updates uh, creates multiple data points. Um, mobile devices. This just makes it easier for, for end users to interact with social media, create more data. Um, mobile devices also uh, create, transmit uh, location-based data. Uh, so essentially, mobile devices are, are enabler of uh, these other types of big data sources. Uh, network devices and infrastructure. Um, so your, your, the IT hardware, your organization, your enterprise is constantly creating data, sending it back to the home base, often sending it back to the manufacturer. Um, there's also sensor data, temperature data, think of a uh, supply chain data, uh, supply chain operation when it comes to something like produce. You've got sensors, temperatures have to be in a certain level. Um, all that, all those sensors create, record, and transmit data. And then think about the utility industry. Uh, we're increasingly seeing the use of smart meters. Um, you know, the gas man used to come to your house once a month to read your meter. Now, smart meters are often sending back multiple data points every 10 or 15 minutes. Um, then, of course, online transactions. Every time you make a purchase on Amazon.com or, or a, click on a deal on Groupon or open a new account at Bank of America, trade stock, or book some travel, you're creating multiple data points. So we need new ways to process and analyze and manage this data. One of those is Hadoop. Hadoop is an open source framework for processing, storing, and analyzing big data. Now, there's a lot of technical detail we can go into, but I think what the, the fundamental concept to understand is that uh, rather than banging away at one huge block of data with a single machine, Hadoop breaks up big data into multiple parts so that each part can be processed and analyzed in parallel. This is different uh, from the traditional scale-up approach. Again, this requires scale-out uh, architecture. So the pros and the cons. Now, Hadoop. As I mentioned, it's a time and cost effective approach to storing and analyzing large volumes of unstructured data, allowing for new and unprecedented types of analytics. Now the bad news. Uh, Hadoop is pretty complex. Uh, it's a pretty complex framework. Uh, it's not easy to deploy or manage. Making matters worse, there's a dearth of Hadoop savvy engineers on the market um, and data scientists to kind of do the analysis of Hadoop based data. And of course, with any open source project where commercial vendors start to get involved, you've got the risk of forking and potentially vendor lock-in. Although we're still in pretty early days, and whether that turns out lock-in uh, risk turns out to be a major risk remains to be seen. But some more pros. Um, I was just at Hadoop World in New York City last week, and I can attest to this that there are many uh, bright minds contributing to the Hadoop project. Um, resulting in rapid development of the technology. Uh, there are also a lot of vendors emerging uh, that are working to make Hadoop enterprise ready. These include both kind of new players on the market, uh, such as Cloudera and others, as well as more uh, conventional or traditional uh, database vendors getting involved. So this slide here kind of uh, takes you through the big data ecosystem. I apologize if it's a little hard to read. Um, you can log on to wikibon.org and take a look at this in more detail. Um, but I just thought I'd, it would be useful to, to um, kind of show you how we see the market in terms of segmentation. Um, as I mentioned, commodity hardware is very important, uh, the kind of the basis to uh, make the new possible. Um, commodity storage, servers, networking gear, uh, kind of all the usual suspects here, Dell, HP, <coughs> IBM, and others uh, are getting involved in that market. Uh, they are often or are increasingly partnering with some of the vendors in the next segment, the big data distributions. Um, well, Hadoop, of course, is an open source project under the uh, Apache project. So you could, uh, you can download Apache, uh, the Apache distribution of Hadoop for free. But there are a number of vendors that are working to make Hadoop more enterprise ready by uh, packaging it with uh, customized management and installation tools. Um, among those, Cloudera, uh, more recently Hortonworks, uh, which was a, originally the actually the engineering division of Yahoo, or the Hadoop engineering division of Yahoo. They spun that off into a new company uh, over the summer, and they've just released some of their new products. Um, of course, you've got IBM, EMC, uh, MapR, which is another startup taking a slightly more proprietary approach, uh, but pretty interesting nonetheless. 
Uh, next, you've got the, the various components in the Hadoop distribution. Um, you've got your open source components under the Apache project, but also a number of vendors like the distribution themselves, um, kind of looking to commercialize some of the um, databases, data stores within the Hadoop environment. Um, NoSQL databases, uh, your Hadoop optimized data warehousing, uh, data integration, data quality, data, data governance tools. You know, those problems don't go away just because we're dealing with big data. In fact, they they get more difficult to, to deal with. So some of the vendors in that space, Datastax is a kind of a new player on the market, and then some more uh, names you might recognize, Informatica, and the data integration space recently re uh, released a uh, data parser specifically for Hadoop. So we're seeing uh, players in both kind of the startup and the more traditional vendor market of vendor uh, landscape get involved here. Uh, the next segment actually is the most interesting from my perspective, and we're seeing um, interest shift to the analytics and application layer of Hadoop. Because this is really where businesses are going to find value in Hadoop. Um, if you think of kind of the, the Hadoop distribution and some of the other segments we're talking about as the infrastructure or the, even the plumbing of Hadoop, the analytics application layer is where you're actually taking all that data you've managed and processed in Hadoop. Now it's available to you. What do you do with it? And that's where the analytics and applications come in. Um, again, there's uh, there are kind of new startups on, on coming on the scene. Uh, Organizations like Karmasphere and Hadap that are building analytic development platforms specifically for Hadoop and others, uh, SAS, Revolution Analytics, uh, that have been around for a little bit longer but are, are more and more integrating their products with Hadoop. Uh, next, the presentation later. Of course, you've got to make all this data visible to the end user, to the mere mortal, and we've got again. Players like Datamere Platform building business intelligence uh, platforms specifically for Hadoop. And you've got some, uh, again, some more names you might be familiar with Tableau Software, MicroStrategy, and others um, kind of working uh, to integrate their products on top of Hadoop. And finally, the services segment, which we think is actually going to be quite important in the Hadoop landscape, considering uh, the dearth of skilled uh, engineers, data scientists out there. We think services are going to play a really important role. Um, both in terms of professional services, uh, companies like Think Big Analytics, Think Big Analytics, excuse me, um, as well as cloud providers. As I mentioned earlier, we see the cloud as a, a natural fit for big data, um, and there are increasingly companies coming on the scene that are uh, will run your big data kind of in the cloud and deliver you the results, rather than having you have to deploy, manage, and tune a do deployment internally. Now, at the bottom here of the slide, kind of related. Um, what we're calling the next generation data warehouse appliances. These are uh, massively parallel columnar uh, data warehouses, analytic databases. Uh, they're fast loading, they're for real time analytics on relatively large data sets, perhaps not Hadoop large, Hadoop level big data. Um, but these play an integral role in the big data ecosystem, and increasingly we're finding these two approaches to be complementary. Uh, one doesn't replace the other, and in fact, we're seeing a lot of uh, forward thinking organizations uh, doing a lot of their deep research and I should say deep analytics on large data sets in Hadoop, porting some of that results over to their, to their more traditional uh, data warehouse environment and vice versa. So now I thought I'd go into some use cases. Um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, Yahoo, big uh, pioneer in the, in the Hadoop world. In fact, uh, Hadoop was developed by a gentleman named Doug Cutting who at the time worked for Yahoo, and Hadoop, in case you were wondering, uh, is named after a stuffed animal toy of his son, an elephant, which is why you see a lot of elephant logos in this, uh, in this market. In any event, um, they have one of the largest Hadoop installations on the planet. Uh, approximately 40,000 nodes handling over 200 petabytes of data. Uh, they use this to support research uh, for their ad systems and their web search. Uh, among other things, they match ads with users. Uh, they call through the enormous amounts of uh, Yahoo Mail to detect spam uh, pickup patterns to uh, better identify spam and filter that out before it gets to your inbox. And they also use it to pick relevant stories, top stories for their various news, successful news pages, among other things. And as I mentioned earlier, they recently spun out their engineering team, which still supports Yahoo, but is now looking to get into the business of commercializing the uh, I thought I'd talk about Facebook next. This gentleman is uh, Jeff Hammerbacher. 
he's actually with Padera now as their chief scientist, but he was, he's the, basically the man who coined the term data scientist when he was at Facebook. Um, so at Facebook, they have two major clusters uh, of Hadoop processing and storing over 30 petabytes of data. Uh, among other things, they're using HDFS, the Hadoop Distributed File System, uh, to store copies of internal log and dimensional data. Uh, they've developed Hive, an open source data warehouse specifically for uh, the Hadoop ecosystem to perform large scale analytics on user data. Uh, and they're also using HBase, another open source uh, transactional database uh, spe specifically designed uh, for Hadoop to manage and retrieve Facebook Messenger data. Both Hive and HBase are part of the uh, Apache project as well. Uh, next is LinkedIn. Um, I'm sure everyone in here is, has used LinkedIn and every time you log on and, and that people you may know feature that recommends, um, well, people you may know, uh, is, is supported by Hadoop. Um, they tailor uh, a search engine to return the most relevant results for recruiters, employers, and job seekers. And they use it to create a visualization tool uh, to allow users to explore their professional network to discover hidden patterns. Uh, big Data and Financial Services. Uh, financial Services is another uh, early adopter of Hadoop uh, and other Big Data approaches. Um, notoriously hard to get them to talk publicly for obvious reasons, but uh, last week at Hadoop World, I uh, got the chance to listen to J.P. Morgan Chase present, um, and they had this staggering stat to, to, to lead off their talk. Uh, J.P. Morgan has over 30,000 databases and 15,000 applications in use spread across seven business units across the globe. That's a lot of data. So they're using Hadoop as the basis for what they're calling a common data platform. Essentially, they're looking to bring in all their customer data from across all these databases and applications uh, into one platform, Hadoop, which is now, which is what they wanted to do for a while, but they didn't have a, a platform capable of supporting that much data. Hadoop, they, they can, can allow them to do this. This is still a work in progress, and they're looking to establish a 360 degree view of their customer, look for upsell, cross sell opportunities, perform other analytics to help them better tailor their products. Other organizations or financial organizations using Hadoop, Visa, Bank of America, a lot of the Wall Street firms uh, trading firms use uh, Hadoop and other big data techniques <coughs> for risk management, uh, essentially to understand uh, their financial exposure, um, to better manage that process. Uh, they use it to detect fraudulent transactions, Visa in particular credit card activity, uh, able now to mine much larger data sets to uh, discover patterns that indicate potential fraud than, than was previously, uh, they were previously able to do. And of course, sentiment analysis on social media data, this applies not just to financial services firms, but to a lot of different organizations, a lot of different uh, vertical markets, I should say. Um, you want to understand what your customer is saying about you on the social web, um, how you can respond and put out any fires before they throw out of control. So that's the end of my portion of the presentation. Um, you can log on to wikibon.org or siliconangle.com. Uh, where you find a lot of this information for the research. We've got live videos from the new world last week and a lot of other uh, resources. So thanks very much.